Has anybody here ever had their car repaired? <laughs> so I could guarantee you that you, when your car was repaired at one time or another, that a SPX product uh, was used to repair it, whether it be an electronic product or a, a, a tool. And um, I'll, I'll tell you a little more about that in this quick presentation. But anyways, I'd also like to thank GM for announcing uh, that, they're, that we're their partner for home installations. Uh, we've been working with General Motors uh, in support of them for almost 100 years, so it's been a pretty long-term relationship. Uh, SPX is a, is a $5 billion Fortune 500 company. Uh, the interesting thing about our company is we're 20% we're automotive, but a big part of the other pieces of SPX are infrastructure, which includes uh, transformers and power plant uh, cooling towers. And I, as we've been traveling around with the GM team to the different utility companies, uh, they don't know us because of the automotive business. They know us because of our uh, Waukesha uh, transformers. So it's an interesting mix for us. We've, we've been in the business of supporting the launch of new vehicles uh, with our tools and equipment. Again, for 100 years, we've, we've worked that long with Ford and Chrysler also, and we do this with many of the other manufacturers around the globe. Uh, we provide this support on a global basis. Uh, when we saw uh, home charging coming along and the need to have units installed uh, in people's homes, we thought this was a very good fit for the processes and uh, services we currently provide to support the dealerships. And uh, we look at home charging as another thing that's key to the launch of uh, uh, the plug-in vehicle platforms. So uh, as we, as this process was developed over the last year and a half, uh, there were some key goals here. We wanted to have a, a single point of contact for the customer. We want to eliminate confusion on the customers. Uh, from the customer's point of view, provide a home charging experience that's safe and convenient, uh, deliver at a low, reasonable cost, an overall installation, and also uh, make sure that uh, their electri electricity cost is, uh, is, is as low as it can be. And then an integrate, integrated system to tie the processes together. And of course, all of this has to be in place uh, for the launch of the vehicle. And uh, the model we're using is, uh, this is a 12, roughly a 12 step process from the uh, inquiry, uh, the initial inquiry on the vehicle, all the way through the end of the installation. But um, a key thing that we're uh, wrapping a, this around with is our call center. Uh, we will, we call this never let go customer support. Our call center will walk the consumer through the whole process and be the single point of contact so the customer doesn't have to call the electrician, doesn't have to call the hardware company, doesn't have to call the inspector. Uh, we will follow up and then we will back that up with our systems. Every, everything will be tracked in the system so that the customer, uh, whenever they call us, we can tell them where things are. This is the uh, SPX uh, GM Volt home charging site. This was just launched a couple weeks ago. It's uh, www.homecharging.spx.com. Two minutes to go here. Um, this is, uh, I could talk about this for hours, but I only have two minutes, so. There's a, a portion in here talking about uh, the certification of contractors, which is very critical to this program. We currently have uh, either over 300 contractors currently online or going through this process right now in the uh, U.S. and also uh, we'll be rolling this out in Canada very shortly. And we are looking for good contractors, so if you know anybody that's interested, send them to this site. And the other unique thing we're doing for General Motors, and again, this is core to our business, uh, we're, we're not only supplying an SPX product, we're supplying a complete solution to the customer. So we're offering the Voltec charging unit, which of course was designed alongside with the Volt. 
Uh, we offer the Coulomb and the Equitality units in support of the DOE programs in certain parts of the country. And we also will have an SPX uh, charging station later on. But we're offering the consumer choices and also the ability to take advantage of all these programs, but also give the GM the ability to understand uh, where this product is, you know, and uh, what, what a consumer has in their home. We have both the, the GM uh, Voltec unit is in the back of the room. I'm not, I won't go through the details on this. And also our SPX unit. And of course the Echotality and, and uh, the Coulomb folks are here too. So with that, thank you very much. Okay, that was a, that was a great slide showing the interchangeability of not all EVSEs are created equal, but at the end of the day, they're all supposed to do the same job. They're all supposed to have the same connector on them. So um, that, that is, that's extremely important to note. Um, all right, we're going to bring up AeroVironment next. If I can find it here, come on up. Uh, number 15. 15, there we go. Okay, Paul Glenny from AeroVironment. Good, good afternoon. Uh, always speaking after lunch is, is a lot of fun, so I'll try to keep it fresh. Uh, AeroVironment has been in the uh, clean transportation business for about 40 years. We're a public company. Uh, we're on the NASDAQ AVAV. Uh, you may have known us from the days of Paul McCready, who uh, developed the uh, human-powered airplane that flew across the English Channel. We also developed uh, solar-powered airplanes. Uh, uh, hydrogen-powered airplanes uh, flying at uh, 60,000 and 97,000 feet. Also uh, working with General Motors on the solar-powered uh, Sunracer. Uh, more relevantly, we've also uh, shipped about 14,000 fast charge ports for uh, ground support equipment and in industrial applications like uh, electric forklifts, uh, test equipment for battery uh, charging and battery uh, uh, cycling to uh, all the OEMs across the country and across the world. We also developed the General Motors Impact, which was the, uh, the precursor to the EV1. So if you ever saw uh, Who Killed the Electric Car, you'll see a lot of aero environment engineers bagging on pretty much everybody. <laughs> <coughs> I'm not here to do that today. Uh, we, we do have about two decades of uh, EV expertise, as I mentioned, uh, from the days of the General Motors impact to uh, industrial posi charge to today where we're doing uh, DC fast charging and level two chargers. Uh, more recently, uh, we've uh, been uh, awarded the sole preferred provider for uh, level two with Nissan on the LEAF. Uh, we support that program uh, in the ride and drive. So we've got people uh, down at uh, Culver City, Century City today. Um, also, think with fast charging, we've been listed as uh, one of Fortune uh, uh, Cool Companies. You know, this is kind of an interesting time for us because the automotive industry has always been separate from the utility industry. And now here we have two gigantic industries that are coming head on at each other, and we're dragging the battery industry along with a lot of new technologies. Uh, so, and then we're bringing, bringing all of this into the home. So I think this is a very exciting time for, for all of us in EVs uh, as we try to do it again. This is a, uh, an overview of uh, what we call the EV ecosystem. And we really believe in this where you have charging infrastructure in, in residences, you've got it at home, at work, uh, you've got telematics, you've got it at the malls, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's fast charging uh, at gas station-like uh, venues, and also feeding in with renewable energy to clean up that energy mix. And as we were discussing at lunch, California, we've got a pretty clean uh, energy mix uh, as, as uh, compared to the rest of the United States and a couple uh, other states. Uh, Aero environment, we do uh, level two hardware. That, what that means is 220 volt uh, uh, AC charging. We make uh, singles, duals. We make a commercial version with point of sale and RFID. 
Uh, we also uh, get into DC fast charging. This terminology, uh, so the SAE uses level three. I, I prefer to say DC fast charging. Uh, on the LEAF, that charges uh, uh, that car in about 26 minutes. We've shown on uh, the Think and other cars that you can do it in under 10 minutes. Uh, everything we're, we're doing is geared around uh, adoption of vehicles, of, of electric vehicles. And so this is a great um, display of why you might want uh, DC fast chargers. And this is the TEPCO study. I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, different uh, avenues of this before. And um, basically what you're seeing is in stage one, they only had one DC fast charger, and it, you can see from the red arrows where the, the uh, service vehicles were traveling out to, and the whole black is the entire service area. So they're not actually covering the service area. And more importantly, if you look down below, the cars were coming back with a full battery. But then later on, they added this second uh, charger in the middle of the territory, and then all of a sudden, the cars went everywhere. And it wasn't because they were stopping at the second fast charger, it was because they had the confidence that they could make it back. And what you can see on the bottom right-hand corner is that when they actually came back, they actually came back with an empty battery. So that's what we talk about range anxiety. Uh, fast charging solutions, mobile uh, charging solutions. You can see some, the, some cord sets that we're building in Europe, uh, DC fast charging, both consumer and fleet versions. Uh, we are supporting, this is Santa Monica at the Alt uh, Car Vehicle uh, show a couple of weeks ago. You can see we built this trailer uh, to support the LEAF. Uh, this works off of uh, line power. It also has a DC fast charger, so the picture on the left is actually fast charging the vehicle. And then uh, on the right, uh, lower right, we also have uh, uh, pedestals that were set up to do level two charging. We've got uh, contractors' licenses from California to Florida right now, up to Washington. We're doing installations. These are some of the first uh, a dual pedestal, a single pedestal, and then also wall-mounted units. And uh, basically, we're, we're doing all the installation services. If you go to the Nissan LEAF uh, journey, customer journey, we're on the back end of, that, uh, of the website. We handle all the CRM. Uh, the contracting, uh, all of that activity. And then um, I'm, I'm going to skip this slide. We've been working with utilities. We've got some subscription service uh, uh, deals coming up. And then um, I'll just skip right, right to the end since it's the end. I just want to leave a final note. The Stone Age didn't end for lack of stone in the oil age. Well, and long before the world runs out of oil, you know, I, I, I'm not thinking that, uh, that electricity is going to replace oil. You know, petroleum is the queen of all the fuels. Uh, it's that way for a reason. But I think that we can start to make some headway here and, and start to clean up our, uh, our fuel mix and start to, uh, to work on energy security and energy independence. Thank you very much. Thank you.